And I thank you. I thank also Can the president that. of this country and the wife. They are doing an amazing job. If not for them, I don't think we'll be here talking about this. Mm. They have made it possible for us to be able to think like them because they are good visionary leaders. So Absolutely. we are also following that full step to think about how do we add value to this country, Rwanda? How do we make positive impact to this country? This is, a, this is going to be the first project, but it's not going to be the last. I thank you all. Thank you. This indeed is a beautiful uh, um, opportunity. I want to thank the President for Kagame. I want to thank the First Lady. I want to thank you, the press. I want to thank everyone in Rwanda. I wish the whole Africa can be like Rwanda. I just wish. It's a wish. Because it's a, in terms of everything, like Rwanda is the only country you can use to compare to any European country in terms of structure, organization, in every way. I want to thank the president for working so hard and all the cabinet members. The way the country is today is hard work. And I want to appreciate them all. And even everybody in Rwanda, they are they're, they're supporting people friendly. It helps the government to put up a structure. It, 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 it's one thing for a government to put up a structure and it's another thing for the people in the country to follow suit mm. and make it work. Yes. Everybody is working in Rwanda. That is why Rwanda is what it is. When you say visit Rwanda, that is visit wow. Rwanda. And when you come to Rwanda, you see the difference mm. between Rwanda and other African countries. I want to thank everybody. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so let's have a picture. So it's a duty for the media to take the message that they are receiving here today to the rural women and say there's a place for you in Kigali. So everybody cannot come to convention center. If all the women come to convention center, you won't be able to take them. Yeah. But we'll start from here. With your help, the rural women out there will know that there's a product that can benefit them. What we are doing is to encourage women to help women. Mm -hmm. And women cannot do it alone without the men. So the men are also invited to attend so that we can also learn on how best we can also support our women to help women. Fantastic. All right. To also further help um, women nice. who are interested and available to come from <coughs> the rural areas, we can quickly ask them to... Um, Register, come over to the event if they need um, support um, to come. I think we can transport. Yes, we can. So we can. We'll be able to put in buses to yeah. pick um, women leaders from the communities in rural areas to, to attend. So the media help us to and open up a registration line, mm -hmm. phone lines for them to, Let's you know, get to know who is interested, interested in coming. So we can facilitate transport so for them to come over. Yes. yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you have another, another one? Another one. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, we've had Mr. Bright saying a lot, a lot of invitees from uh, like all of Africa. Yeah. Now that we haven't had any, any, any of the big names in, like, in Rwanda. Have we, have we invited the government or other NGOs in charge of promoting women and stuff? Yes, actually we've extended invitation to um, the Minister of Gender. We also extended invitation to Honorable Proteus Musoni. Yes. Yes. yes, who Pan Africa. Yeah, Pan African Pan Movement, Pan Movement. Who, um, who is also a keynote speaker yeah, at the event. Then we're working with RDB. We've gone to several meetings with RDB and, and they are doing their part actually to mobilize for this program. And we even have um, a speaker from RDB Good. who will be speaking on investment opportunities in Rwanda. Good to all the people coming over. So we are carrying them along big time. Um, the reason why we have to mention some of people coming from outside is for us to know that it's actually truly an African project, not just um, a one country project. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also invited the uh, Equity Bank, Diane from Equity Bank. She's in charge of uh, women banking, helping women in banking area. Mm -hmm. So we invited her and she's coming. She said okay. she's coming too. Maybe invite the first lady. 
first lady should be there. She's our host. She's our host. We can't change that. You know what we're doing? We're following her full step. Okay. Yeah. So she's our host. Okay. The other one. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I'm God. The Onika says. I'll ask. So why did you choose Mr. Anubu Safi? How came this organization? Okay, when we came into town, we had a meeting with um, um, people in the country and we were, we were looking at the best hands to help us move the project forward and all that. So we actually got some good hands and um, when we needed media to reach out to more people, he came highly recommended and we decided to approach him. And so far, we've had a good working relationship with him. All right. No disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, thank you so much. I'm Prizo from 1K His Beauty. Uh, when you talk about women, we can talk about also innovation. So, at uh, this program, Women Helping Women, is any grant or guys uh, we give some, uh, some women who, which has uh, innovative uh, ideas? Yeah, right. So, I love the question. Um, earlier, the country coordinator for the project, Helen, talked about um, African Women Innovation Hub. This project was um, launched in Nigeria, in Abuja, Nigeria, during the Focus Africa Women Conference, um, Women in Leadership Conference. And we are actually going to unveil, launch the project properly, unveil rather, unveil the project during reading this retreat in Rwanda here. So this project gives opportunity to women from every background, women from every sector in, in our African economy, even those from the rural area, to be involved, to learn things around information technology, IT, and be able to you know develop themselves. So it's an innovative hub that was launched by High Excellency Mrs. Alangi Silva in Nigeria. This is her pet project. It's very she's very keen about empowering women to stand alone, empowering women to see opportunities, empowering women to do business with each other for a very long time. She's championed projects around women, helping to make sure that every woman is empowered. In fact, one of the things she said at the last program is help to readjust the crown on another lady's head. Instead of pulling really another lady down, down help them to rise, well, readjust their beautiful. crown, make them more visible, make them more engaged. She's very passionate about this project. So there will be opportunities created through the African Women Innovation Hub for women from every country in Africa. Secondly, we've invited the Managing Director of Lotus Bank in Nigeria. She is uh, Mrs. Kafilat Areoye. So she will be at this program also to talk about business opportunities, funding opportunities, financial inclusion for women. So she's going to be pointing you to direction. You know, one of the misconceptions misconception we have is that you must get money only from the bank. No, women can help another woman to raise money for business can point them to direction of opportunities and can also tell them, you know, it's not every business that you need physical cash to start. There are businesses that you can start with goodwill and all of that. That's why we've assembled the right speakers for this program to help point people, women especially, to what they can do to become self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Gwen Jason. I'm a journalist at Yola TV. First of all, I want to thank you so much, you guys, for the good ideas and the good project in here in Rwanda. So I would like to ask you if uh, you can make the, the other other delegation just to promote uh, also the man. <laughs> 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 jealous. All right. All right. All right. I'm jealous. Okay, yeah. All right. All right. All right. I'm becoming jealous yeah. now. All right. yeah. All right. 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 All <laughs> what I personally like about uh, your question is how you put the question. Mm. So we had a similar scenario at the last program where a man mm. 
was also very jealous mm. but the way he presented it was not very right so the way he presented it yeah. um, has given us a cause to think about it yeah. so after this program men we'll happy men <laughs> men happy I'm men we'll be taking men we'll be taking men to the jungle where there will be no AC <laughs> <laughs> so that we can help ourselves yes. it's, it's a very important question mm -hmm. I mean we have a lot of things lined up after this we're going to be telling my African story. Mm -hmm. We're also going to be talking about the main code. Mm -hmm. Now, where you can help a man to be able to help a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, men, we don't have much problems. Mm -hmm. Trust me. Yeah. We don't have a lot of problems as men, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but the aspect we're going to bring this in is to be able to help men, equip men to be able to help women and we have a better society. So, thank you for the thank question. You. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yes, go ahead. Yes, thank you. My name is Frank. I serve uh, in Iran and the city radio. And I was uh, I want to ask for those who will not be able to attend physically. So have you prepared the any uh, platform to let them follow what will be done? Media for streaming and all that. Yeah. Uh, we just have to go. Are we going to do live stream? When exactly? During the program. Yeah, we, we can do that. We can. No problem. We can, yeah. Okay, so I was just consulting our media head. So we'll be able to do live streaming on YouTube and then on Focus Africa channels. And then we're also inviting media houses like TV and all that. So we should be able to watch it either live yeah. or as a documentary. But we're going to make the videos available for those who will not be able to attend. Yeah. Well, first of all, let us focus in uh, getting huge attendance. That's what we need. Yeah. Convention uh, center has been secured already. If you make it so open for live streaming, a lot of people will prefer to watch from the comfort of their home. Mm. And when they watch from there, they won't be able to ask questions. Not yeah, uh, exactly. apart from being uh, uh, vacant, mm. they won't be able to ask questions. And then physical contact with all these uh, facilitators yeah. will also encourage more. So what we do is encourage people to be able to attend. All right. Mm. More questions. Go yes. ahead. Okay, that's it. I know he is in a better position to answer that question, but I'm mm. going to say something real quick before yeah, I allow ahead, you to ahead, handle. Ahead. Yeah, uh, for the fact that we're having this program here in Rwanda, it means there's a success story behind it. Otherwise, it would have died from the first edition, second edition, third edition, till the seventh edition. So it means there's progress, there's success story. So I'm going to leave. Mr. Success mm. to talk about the success story. <laughs> success to talk about the success story. <laughs> okay, it's um, quite interesting the question you've asked, and um, that question I can answer it in one sentence, but I'll give you more details. I mean, when you go to a place and you did not gain anything from that place, you will not go back, right? So, since 2015, consistently, we've grown to where we have 2,000 people, 5,000 people attending our program, and they keep coming back. Now, one of the ways you will know that it's also a success story is that a minister from a country, a vice president's wife from a country cannot leave their country and come if there is no value in what you do. So for we have had a consistent success story since 2015 and it keeps growing. So we have um, a compendium of women, like in a photo story, of people that have been imparted through our project, over 10,000 of them have gone through our conferences, they've learned quite a lot. 
In fact, what gave um, rise to this program we're doing in Kigali today was that we had the leading women conference in Nigeria in May. And at the end of that program, the women that came to the program say, no, we want some more. Can you do another one for us? This was just May. So by, by design, we should be doing it every year. But just in a space of three months, they say they want another one. So I will encourage you personally to come to Kigali Convention Center. And after that conference, you will have a story to tell others. Success story. <laughs> Success story to tell others. <laughs> so, do we have more questions so that we can Come. end the. Yeah. Yes. Mm. My name is Yawose Dietone. I work, uh, I'm from uh, Wazis Gazette. I'm going to ask you in Kinyawana. Yeah, go ahead. It's also a challenge to regulate Africa. Is also very passionate about helping girl child to you know find a voice and we have the likes of dr choma who is the united nations ambassador for the girl child we have Vivita vibia from cameroon who is the founder of i am woman <coughs> and you know taka and a whole lot of people giving the girl child a voice across africa so this is going to play a prominent role at this conference in kigali in fact, at the end of this program, we are launching the project called Dignify. Dignify is that a gear child should have a voice. A gear child should be able to find herself, should be able to communicate in the midst of people, should be able to have pride with herself. So that's what Dignify is about. So it's going to be a full section at this conference where we'll be talking about giving the gear child a voice. Do we have more? All right. So um, I think we've um, done justice to this discussion, and um, I would like to have uh, Mr. Chairman um, do the closing yes. remarks. Okay. All right. Um, I thank you all the the media uh, for making it possible and uh, sparing time. I know how busy you guys are. You know, for you to be here today is uh, a, a huge, a huge, huge privilege. Thank you for making it to this point. I thank you also our media coordinator. Okay. Yeah, I thank you, uh, the chairman of this uh, whole organization. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bright, for giving us an opportunity to work for you. And uh, I thank you once again for choosing Rwanda to tell these African stories. I know that at the end of the day, Rwanda will be happy that such a thing is happening in Rwanda. I also encourage you, the media, to go out there, spread the news. This is a positive news. Let us engage as many women as we can. And, uh, and I thank you. I thank also the president of this country and the wife. They are doing an amazing job. If not for them, I don't think we'll be here talking about this. Mm. They have made it possible for us to be able to think like them because they are good visionary leaders. So Absolutely. we are also following that full step to think about how do we add value to this country, Rwanda? How do we make positive impact to this country? This is, a, this is going to be the first project, but it's not going to be the last. I thank you all. Thank you. This indeed is a beautiful uh, um, opportunity. I want to thank the president for Kagame, I want to thank the First Lady, I want to thank you the press, I want to thank everyone in Rwanda. I wish the whole Africa can be like Rwanda. I just wish, it's a wish. Because it's a, in terms of everything, like Rwanda is the only country you can use to compare to any European country in terms of structure, organization, in every way. I want to thank the President for working so hard and all the cabinet members the way the country is today is hard work, and I want to appreciate them all. And even everybody in Rwanda, they are they're, they're supporting people friendly. It helps the government to put up a structure. It, 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 it's one thing for a government to put up a structure, and it's another thing for the people in the country to follow suit mm. and make it work. Yes. Everybody is working in Rwanda. That is why Rwanda is what it is. When you say visit Rwanda, that is visit wow. Rwanda. And when you come to Rwanda, you see the difference mm. between Rwanda and other African countries. I want to thank everybody. Wow, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's have a peek.